guys. Thank you so much for doing this interview. Usually we do this in person, but this time we had to do it over the phone because when they were making all the big announcements and everything, I got there too late to find you guys. <laughs> so my <laughs> apologies, but my thing was, you know what? To me, it's tradition to talk to you both uh, when it comes to tip and talk about the shortcuts because, as I've always said, to me, shortcuts is the jewel of tip and you find so many great short films how do you feel about that well thanks so much for saying so first of all it's great i mean we uh robin and i work real hard and there's nothing we want more than to give some love and attention to all these like amazing amazing filmmakers that we find every year i mean some are people who have uh been at the festival before either in shortcuts we've got quite a few people who've had features at the festival this year but a lot of them are like brand spanking new and the world should know <laughs> <laughs> i definitely agree with that what makes a shortcut short film what 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 are the rules for that uh well they need to be under um 40 minutes or 40 minutes or under and uh, beyond that, there's really <laughs> no rules. It's, it's, we look at what we have in the submissions, and we don't go in with pre-planned themes or, you know, um, things that we're looking for. It's just, you know, whatever shakes out as, as quality filmmaking with unique voices, that's what we end up programming, and that's what we're looking for. How many films did you both have to see, and... How many do we get? To, oh, I love that little laughter. How many? <laughs> and how many do we get a chance to see? Oh, my God. It really is like a mountain of material. I mean, we have this amazing team of uh, pre-screeners and our program associates. I need us to have a call, and, and we have, our eyes are on all this stuff. But we're all tackling this mountain of about 4,500 submissions for shorts from all over the world. Wow. So it is it is a lot to go through. And there's a lot of stuff that's like, fantastic and we just like um you know and a lot of it just is really kind of comes down to what kind of fits together the best you know we yeah. want films that are bold and exciting but also like really different from each other and just have this, this really wide diversity of work and voice and perspective and style and so that all comes down to this year came down to 55 films so it's super tight that's you know it's like it's you go through a lot of uh, films and a lot of really, really strong work, but you can't play all of it. You kind of just end up with this selection that you feel kind of fits together the best in this weird jigsaw puzzle <laughs> that we try to do every year. Yeah. Is it just films? Is it animation, too? Is it computer? Like, what are the different types that are we going to see? Yeah, there's definitely animation this year. Um, we have um, about five or six animated films, and we try to... Um, you know, really mix up what people are seeing. There's documentaries, there's uh, all types of different genres. We have a couple of horror films in there. We have things that are more of a sci-fi flavor. Um, so there's definitely different kind of mediums that we that we throw in, not just uh, dramatic short films that you would expect. We also have a couple of interesting fantasy, magical realist uh, shorts this year that I think people are really going to enjoy. Now, and of course, it's there's no way we can mention all the films that are going to be seen. So I'm going to ask from both of you, uh, give me two films each that you think that should be on people's radar. doesn't mean that the rest are bad. It just means let's get talking <laughs> about maybe two of them because we only have a certain amount of time. So like I just said, that should be on people's radar. Uh, are, I'll throw one out first. But it's one that I'm – it's one that, like, we've been sort of sharing – shorts of people in history just to kind of get the buzz going and and one that seems to be really blowing up is this uh one from france called the end there which uh is by this uh, great young kind of an elevated genre director type uh filmmaker named uh, william labory and and this is interesting too because we see a lot of different a lot of you know you see a lot of the same sorts of films you see a lot of shorts and certainly there's a lot of kind of like science fiction, black mirror style stuff, you know, it's kind of just maybe near future, things that might be going wrong in the very near future, those sorts of stories. And, and his kind of fit like that, but he was just like original and bold and super cool. And he's got amazing visual effects and great performances. And it's just something that I think is going to be like, he's going to be, uh, he's already a big name to us, but I think he's somebody who's, like, who's going to be breaking big. So I think that's the end is definitely one to watch. Wow. Can I get another one, please? Yeah. Um, I want to talk about Thirsty. Um, this was a real 
pleasant surprise for me in our batch of submissions. It's uh, directed by Nicole Delaney, and she's a comic writer for um, shows like Big Mouth and Rescue Party. And it's about a mosquito voiced by Maya Rudolph um, who falls in love with a recently dumped man played by Jay Ellis, who is Lawrence on Insecure. And really, uh, it's a very kind of fantastical tale about what we do for the people we love and how we change ourselves for the people we love. And it's really hilarious. We laughed out loud, um, but touching as well. I've heard about Thirsty. And uh, that one's actually on my list to see. Could I get uh, one more from each of you? Uh, I'm really, really excited about one of the animation. Actually, it's a really, really, really great animation, a really uh, terrific year, one where uh, super pleased to have the world premiere of um, uh, latest by a Swedish animator named Nikki Lindros von Barr. It's brand new. They finished it just in time for us because we had great success with uh, Nikki's uh, short called Min Borda, The Burden, which is one of these films that comes out and win- goes out and wins like 200 awards on the film <laughs> <or> festival <laughs> circuit. So we're really stoked that, and, and love that Nikki uh, was able to finish this other one. And she uses a lot of stop motion and kind of these very, very sad anthropomorphic creatures. <laughs> so, and it's kind of, and it's very musical too. It's kind of like, imagine like a Spike Jones movie populated by very sad creatures. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it is very delightful, very funny, um, and very much in this kind of like, you know, uh, northern deadpan sense of humor. So I think that one's going to be another big success for her. Incredible. And one more, please. Okay, so I would be remiss if I didn't mention that we have a cat documentary um, that we're showing, and so it is called Cats Are Gray in the Dark, and it is this fantastic documentary about a man who's just very invested in the well-being of his cat, and um, in order to, you know, get his cat to um, produce kittens, he kind of finds a tomcat, brings him into his house, and I mean, this man takes his cat everywhere there's a picture of him and his cat skiing and it is um funny and he's one of these quirky subjects that you see and probably some of your favorite documentaries and uh we were just kind of blown away by it and immediately knew that we had to fit it somewhere into our program so (laughs) oh my god i'm trying to scratch my head this is a documentary this isn't made up this is actually something that is happening (laughs) oh no it's amazing (laughs) And it's wow. one of these documentaries. It's one of these documentaries you watch, and you're like, "How is there a camera in this room? How is this like? How is this still real life? Because it's it's just immaculately sort of composed, and you have like mm-hmm. one, like you have like instant cat meme after another, one after another. <laughs> oh my goodness, I cannot wait for this. And it sounds like there are a lot more great uh, shortcuts to see. Where do we go to find out our list for shortcuts? to check out all the films that are going on during the Toronto International Film Festival? Uh, certainly, um, TIFF.net. Uh, you'll see all of us on the schedule. We're running films pretty much every day. Um, we, we get great houses. I think tickets still available for most screenings, but uh, act fast because they do fill up. And we have tons of filmmakers in town uh, to present their films. So it's always great to have a big, warm room and to give them some love because they definitely deserve it. Yeah. I'm so looking forward to this. Folks, thank you so much for making the time. I promise next year I will be there on time so we can do this one-on-one <laughs> on film. But thanks for making the time to speak with me. Thanks so thanks much. Thanks for inviting us. Take care. Thanks again. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.